Hamas Prime Minister Ismail Haniya says resistance is the only way to liberate Palestinian land from Israeli occupation. Resistance and armed struggle is the only strategic way to liberate all occupied Palestinian land and to drive Israeli occupiers out of our sacred land. He said Hamas will never stop resistance until all occupied territories are liberated. And he stressed Hamas is not a small movement that can be neglected. He said his group is the strongest part of Palestine that has stood against political isolation and years-long Israeli siege. And he was addressing more than 10,000 people marking the 24th anniversary of the foundation of Hamas. The group was founded on December the 14th, 1987, shortly after the beginning of the first intifada or uprising against Israel's illegal occupation of Palestinian land. Israel's demolition of Palestinian homes in the occupied West Bank has sharply increased over the past few years. A coalition of international aid agencies says the destructions have displaced more than 1,000 Palestinians, among them 500 children. That figure is the highest since 2005. NGOs, which include Oxfam and Amnesty International, have also reported a significant rise in illegal settlement projects and settler attacks on Palestinians. The coalition has called on the United Nations, the United States and the European Union to take immediate measures to stop the ongoing settlement expansion and house demolitions that are in violation of international humanitarian law. Meanwhile, Israeli settlers have torched a mosque in central Jerusalem, Al-Quds, as attacks against Palestinians living in the occupied territories intensify. Attackers wrote anti-Muslim graffiti on the walls of the 12th century mosque that's located in an ultra-Orthodox neighborhood. This following two other arson attacks in the occupied West Bank in which two Palestinian cars were set on fire. Extremist armed settlers who enjoy Tel Aviv's support frequently attack Palestinians and their mosques. Such actions have on many occasions led to violent clashes with Palestinians. Meanwhile, Israeli forces have opened fire on a Palestinian farmer east of Gaza City. He was shot by Israeli soldiers who were patrolling the so-called buffer zone east of the city. Israel regularly attacks Palestinians who approach the fence. Tel Aviv has destroyed most of the area's agricultural land and green fields in recent years. This has seriously affected the livelihood of farmers in the besieged coastal enclave. A court case on radiation exposure in Israel's Dimona nuclear plant has revealed that health damage at the nuclear site has been covered up. An Israeli safety engineer has told the district court that workers at the Dimona nuclear plant underwent superficial and inadequate radiation exposure tests. Dr. Dan Litai says no department was tasked with assessing the levels of internal radiation contamination at the Negev reactor until the late 1990s. His testimony came during a court hearing in a case meant to determine whether former employees at the plant should be compensated after they were diagnosed with cancer. Earlier last week, the head of the Radiation Safety Department of the Sorek Nuclear Center presented a similar testimony to the court. He said the cancer victims of the Sorek Center could have been spared if they had undergone preventive radiation exposure tests. Dozens of employees of the Negev and the Sorek nuclear plants have filed lawsuits against the centers since the mid-1990s, but some have died of related health complications since then. The Dimona nuclear facility was secretly constructed by Israel in the late 1950s. It is used to produce weapons-grade nuclear material and is not under international inspection safeguards. Israel is the only nuclear arms regime in the Middle East and maintains a fearsome atomic arsenal containing hundreds of warheads.